Hi, this is Nintendo Sansara for news, gossip, and gup shop. Please check out deciblitz.com. Hi, this is Fessel from deciblitz.com, and we're here today with the talented footballer, Netan Sansara. Netan, welcome to Deciblitz. Thank you. Nathan, were you passionate about football from a very young age? Yeah, I mean, uh, from when I can remember, I was, I was kicking the ball around. Um, you know, my mum and dad showed me little video clips when I was a young kid. Um, you know, and I always had a ball in my hand. So I think it was just like a case of they knew I had a passion for something. And, uh, you know, then I went to play in local schools and, you know, local teams. And then it, and then it obviously spiralled from there. You started your career with um, Walsall Football Club. How did that come about? I started in a community programme at Birmingham City um, and there was a coach that was actually leaving to go to Warsaw at the time and he thought that it would be good for my career and my development to go to, to Warsaw. He thought I had more of a chance of breaking through there and uh, you know going into play as the first team, which I did. It was great, you know, I didn't miss a game all season. You know, we, we got to the playoffs, unfortunately we lost in the playoffs. Um, but you know, it, it was a very good season for me, which you know, I played the games, what I wanted to do, and then I came back. I came back to England, and then was weighing up my options. What was the experience like playing for the Cypriot side, Pike? It was an offer that came along after after Warsaw. You know, I moved to I had a short stint at Dundee, which didn't work out because you know they they went into administration at the time. Um, and then luckily enough, I was able to get out of the contract there and you know move move to Cyprus. It was like a challenging a challenging time for me in my career, but you know I think looking back at it now, I mean you know it was probably one of the best things I've done you know I've gone abroad and you know which I've showed a lot of character to do and you know I've learned a different style of football. Um, last season you played for FC Vestjylen. What are the similar similarities um, and differences between Danish and British football? When I was in Cyprus there was a big difference between you know English and Cypriot football with you know English football obviously being quite physical. Uh, in Cyprus it was more get the ball down and play and more time on the ball and lot, a lot less physical. Uh, Denmark on the other hand was you know a flip side to Cyprus it was more like England I mean Scandinavia is quite well known for being being like, like British football so there's a lot of players that actually go from Scandinavia to play to play in England so you know it's, it's quite similar and you know there's a big 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 similarity there so you know it's quite similar to England uh, you know it's it's tough it's physical you know but also they, they play good football so it was I think Denmark is, is very similar to, to English football. Both in the UK and abroad, have you played alongside any international players? When I was at Warsaw, um, I was called up to the, the England under 18s and 19s. Um, I played with players such as you know Andy Carroll, Daniel Sturridge, uh, Scott Sinclair. So there's been a, there's been a few there's been a few big names uh, you know that I played against, and that, that was a that was a good time in my career. What has been your most memorable moment in football so far? I think obviously signing signing your first professional contract is a massive thing. I mean, at the age of 17 to have done that was a, a massive achievement. Getting called up for England was a you know it's a massive honour, regardless of whether it's 18s, 19s, or the full national team. And have you considered playing for India? Because I believe you, you know you have an Indian background. Yeah, there's there's talk of me obviously playing for playing for India. Um, at the moment, the way it stands is they actually tried to get me and Michael Chopra to go at one stage. Uh, but the way it stands at the moment is in India they they do not grant dual nationality, so they either expect you the rules are over there they expect you to have an Indian passport, which obviously I have a British passport. So it's something that we're looking into me and my representatives, and hopefully one day, you know, it's a, it is we would be a, an honour of mine to represent India. One of the biggest questions people ask is why are there so few Asian players in? Football, South Asian. I have a lot of friends who are, you know, being good players, Asian players. Um, I think I was lucky enough. My case was I was lucky enough to have parents that were British born. They knew that when I had a, a passion for something, they, they pushed that and they, they were there supporting me. So you feel parental sport um, is very important for a young player to make it to the top? Yeah, um, massively. I mean, if you look at all the top players in the world, you know, or ask any professional, I think they, they would say that their parents have been probably massive in their careers because, you know, it, it all stems from them, really. And how long will it be before we see a regular flow of British Asian players into professional football? To be honest with you, at the moment, I mean, you look at how many players are coming through through the academies. I don't see it. 
a lot, but I think the more and more Asian people are playing football now, so I think it'll be a good five to ten years before we actually see someone that breaks through. Do you feel that Football Association has done enough to promote British Asians in, in English football? I'm an ambassador for Kick It Out myself. Uh, you know, I know Kick It Out quite well. They do what they can for uh, Asians in football. But I think collectively, I don't think it's just the FA that need to do things. I think you know the Asian media, you know, need to, to get involved in things. And you know, the Asian the Asian sports associations, they all need to jump on jump on the bandwagon. You know, we do different workshops. We go to you know grassroots events and, and do like. You no know, answer answer questions a question answers times uh, we go to local Sikh temples go to place of worship Asian place of worship just to you know promote promote football promote Asians in football and show and hopefully be a face to, to you know put put a face to a name kind of thing coming from a Punjabi background what is your favorite desi Punjabi dish oh, there's, a, there's a few I mean I like mete ale prote in the morning I have to keep away from them because they, they, they're quite you know they're quite heavy on me but uh, no I like I like my grandma's saga and makidi roti as well that's pretty nice so there's a, there's a fair few I could be here all day you know to be honest but uh, you know I, I like my Indian food uh, my parents you know my mom my mom especially my grandma my baby and my nanny they, they look after me in that in that sense and they're, they're top chefs to be honest does it give you a lot of target yeah it gives me a lot you know it gives me a lot of energy as well like, you know, I say to them all the time that you know when I'm when I'm running around I can sometimes I say I can feel like sometimes I can smell it off me I say so it's you know it's all a bit of light-hearted banter but you know it's I'm proud of my Punjabi roots and you know, whatever I can do to to, to showcase where, where I've come from, and you know my parents' background and my grandparents' background, I will do that.